Live from the heart of New York City, it's the morning show with Mike and Juliet. College students at risk. In the next few weeks, the number of date rape incidents and sex assault incidents on college campuses all across this country, including in your town and your city, they will spike dramatically. Thousands of freshmen are beginning their first year away from home. Everybody's coming back. Yeah. It's the time where you meet, you know, all these new people are sort of it's influx on campus. And you can tell the parents out there right now are going, oh boy, what are you talking about? It's a crime hard for women to defend against, even harder for them to prove, and more common than colleges would like to admit. It's a chilling crime that haunts college campuses. A crime of violence, forced intimacy, and hidden shame. It's called date rape, and it happens a lot more frequently than people would like to admit. It had happened, and I felt like it was my fault, and I felt very guilty. I just totally just lost it. This freshman code was raped after she was slipped a date rape drug and then ended up with a male friend. People need to know that this does occur. More commonly, close to 60% of the sexual assaults take place while on dates, and 62% of rapes are carried out by classmates or friends. Campuses are no longer the safe haven students and parents imagine them to be. The statistics are staggering. According to the National Institute of Justice, for every 1,000 women attending college, there will be 35 incidents of rape in a given academic year. And it's impossible to estimate if this number has risen because of the chemical advantage college rapists now have with the increased use of date rape drugs like GHB and Rohypnol, all of which presents universities with a big challenge, finding a way to include the topic of sexual assaults into their curriculum. And with us this morning is Princeton graduate Christian Sonner. He says Ivy League school, his Ivy League school, has a lot to learn when it comes to educating students about date rape dangers. We also have Becca Teeter and Kelly Addington, two best friends who co-founded the program Let's Talk About It. Thank you very much for joining Let's us Let's talk today. about it. Kelly, we're going to start with you. You were, uh, you were in school. You were dating a guy. You had gone to a party. You had some drinking. It wasn't, you say, it wasn't excessive. Right. You go home with him. He was your designated driver, mm -hmm. as well yes. as the guy that you're dating. Right. What happens? Um, well, I don't remember what happened, really, is the case. Um, professionals think that I was, had date rape drugs in my system, and I didn't realize that I was sexually assaulted until two months after it actually happened. I found out that I was pregnant. Wow. Now, now I, well, Ma'am. You weren't sexually active. No, we, so we, it wouldn't have been. we were not sexually active. He... We were not sexually active, and I hadn't had sex in almost a year at that so point in my life. So on your way home with him, what do, you, do you remember the ride home? I, I blacked in and out. Um, I don't remember huge chunks of time that happened that evening. I lost a lot of what happened that night, which is why I think and professionals think that uh, drugs were involved. And you don't remember anything about the sexual incident at all? I don't remember anything. Once I got home, lied in my bed, the next thing I remember is waking up the next morning and feeling like I had a massive hangover. You went to your best friend, Becca. You mm -hmm. guys have known each other for years and years. You told her what was going on. You said, I'm, I, I took a, a pregnancy test. I'm pregnant. You took another one to make sure. You ended up having a miscarriage. Yes. But this has stayed with you, and you decided to do something about it. Explain what, what the premise is of your organization. Well, um, the reason that we started this and we founded this is I had such a difficult time um, from becoming a victim to the recovery mm. process to becoming a survivor and to be strong enough and confident enough to stand up and speak out. And so we got together and said, how can we make this better for sure. other students so that they know that resources exist and they know what to do if this happens to them and most importantly, how to prevent it from happening. Thank God for you two, I'm telling you, because we've got all these college freshmen coming in right now. How should college administrations protect these co-eds and teach them about date rape? What's the best way to do it? Well, I think the perfect situation is our students come to campus with some prevention. But as far as education goes, our colleges are doing a great job. But the message of what we have yeah. and how to get access to it is where I think we're losing a lot of our students. Okay, we want to talk to you guys a little bit more about this. We're going to take a quick break. Hey, we are back talking about date rape on college campuses with us. Becca Peter and Kelly Addington, best friends who co-founded the program. Let's talk about it, and that's what we've been doing. We also have recent Princeton graduate Christian Sonner here. He's going to tell us about a program at Princeton that he would like to see changed. And joining us as well is the author of Preventing Hazing, psychologist Dr. Susan Lipkins. She's back. I guess you guys, but I want to continue this story. 
Yeah. 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 When you were in college, you were date raped by a, an acquaintance of yours. Actually, not an acquaintance, the guy that you were dating. Mm -hmm. You have now um, risen up and you're trying to educate people, women and men, about the dangers of date rape, uh, dangers of sexual assault, and how to avoid things like that. Mm -hmm. My question is, how do you avoid, uh, you're out with a guy that you're dating. You say you have to be careful about trust, and I mean, there are a lot of parents out here who are going, oh, geez, my, parent, my kids are on campus right now. You know, you, you sort of feel when you're in college like you, nothing can happen to you. You're untouchable. Um, how do you prevent that, I mean, how, how do you prevent being assaulted by somebody that you're friends with? Well, I think in our case, looking back on it, it, it seems simple, and that's kind of strange for us to say, but in our situation, Becca and I are best friends. We knew everything about each other, intimate details of our lives, so things that we would have done differently in my situation, I had been drinking at the bar that we were at, so she probably would have came home with me, my designated driver, put him on the couch, and she would have slept in my bed with me, changed the paradigm just a little bit, and we totally avoid. Stuff you never even thought of right. before. Um, so, how, you know, let's talk about this Princeton University idea. Mm -hmm. What they decided to do to teach co eds, especially, about all the things that can happen on a college campus, out in the bars, and all that, is to put on a stage play called Sex on Saturday Night. So, Christian, tell me about it's at your school. Tell me what the purpose of it is. Well, Sex on a Saturday Night, it's important to contextualize it to begin with. Mm -hmm. It happens within the first four days of your time on campus, it's a mandatory play. The entire freshman class has to attend. Okay. It's about an hour-long play in which Princeton shows the evils of date rape um, and sexual assault by giving what is, in their view, a normative sense of what it's like to be uh, a typical college student and the typical sexual lifestyles that exist on a college campus. And so that's all played out on stage. Exactly. So there's a lot of sex talk and booze talk and all that. Some people say it goes too far. What's your opinion? Well, my basic objection to the play, and as well as many others, is that the play, given its stated intention, which is sexual assault awareness, has a lot of other collateral messages, what I like to call the static noise that surrounds this. So ultimately, in my opinion, the message about date rape is somewhat reduced, if not blocked out, by a lot of these other messages that basically say it's okay yeah. to participate How in the hookup is the time to, to hook up? Exactly. Really is the message that you feel is coming out of this. Exactly, exactly. Boy, then that's defeating the purpose of it, it seems. Yeah. I mean, for, for from my perspective, it's, uh, you know, date rape is a, an unambiguous issue. Everyone can agree date rape is a terrible thing. We should do our best to but, prevent it. But I mean, it. if you just stand in front of these college co-eds, the freshmen especially, and just say, this is going to, I, they, I can't, in a way, I kind of like it played out in front of them instead of just talk, just words. What do you two think? I think there's a lot of different options. I think you need to know your student body, and I think peer theater can be really effective. Mm -hmm. I think you have to empower your students. These are future leaders. These are our college students. If we give them the power to take control of their campus, yeah. to feel confident in who they are and what they stand for, I think all matters can be effective, but we need to take it a little deeper. Doctor, why does date rape seem like it's underreported? Um, most people are afraid to report it. They, first of all, I think that most kids don't even realize that they've been raped. You know, they, uh, they use alcohol as a lubricant and they decide that, um, you know, just something happened and I hooked up. A lot of them actually don't remember it, or if they do remember it, they deny it, they repress yeah. it, they push it down. Well, Kelly wouldn't have known. I had a patient who's 50 years old, a medical a doctor, mm -hmm. and she was date raped by a, a guy she was dating 25 years ago, and it just came up 25 years later. Is there a possibility that these guys, who these, these you know, young college guys who are boozed up and they go up, that they don't understand what they are doing is rape? Everybody loses their inhibitions when you drink. So both the female and the male are much less inhibited, and that is in fact why kids drink. They don't really want to be responsible for their mm -hmm. behavior. What they don't realize, that because they're trusting, particularly of an acquaintance or a frat brother or somebody who knows somebody, they want to hook up, but they don't necessarily want to have sex. The girls need to be able to say no and be conscious enough to say no, and for the boy to be conscious enough to listen. Yeah. And that's where the consensual issue gets lost, and the kids, particularly the girls, they don't want to remember it, they repress it, they forget yeah. it, they run away from Doctor, it. Doctor, do you think the train has left the station, though? Is there any way to get back a more <laughs> innocent time? Because it does seem like now when kids go off to college, oh, it's time to booze and have sex. You know yeah, what? Yeah, let's share dorms. Yes. Guys and girls in dorms. It's another story we're going to They share doing. everything. But, you know, even in high school, the kids are taught about date rape. They're taught about the drugs, but they don't integrate it. Yeah. They're emotionally not able to integrate it, and that's really the problem. That's why none of the messages get through to the degree that we would like. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and talk about some other tips that you have for people out there, including the to shave or not to shave moment. You'll explain that.